All right, Isaiah 53, let's call this one rejected, quite simply, because I'm hoping that it will reach those who feel rejected, but not rejected for just any reason whatsoever. Those who are actually feeling rejected for the reasons that the Apostle Peter called out in his first epistle, and that is those who are being rejected because they are genuinely trying to be decent people. And he stated it more strongly, not simply trying to be genuinely decent people, but trying to pattern their lives after the Christ, trusting that he has laid an example that can help you do a lot better than you'll do on your own trying to do right. And so to the degree that he told us we can honestly expect to suffer and be rejected for trying to do what's right, I'm hoping that Isaiah 53 can encourage you as I read about the suffering of the Christ. Not trying to summarize it because it falls in a line of passages that I've mentioned before don't really lend themselves to me being able to summarize them effectively right now. And so time permitting, I may offer one observation after I finish reading Isaiah 53. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide with him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. The portion of the chapter that probably stood out to me most being one that comes from the final verse where I emphasized the fact that he will divide the spoil. One version says with the strong, another says with the many in a footnote that I had. Either way, it reminded me of the way in which in life there are times when we can lose so often that we believe that it is our lot in life to lose, meaning we feel like we're supposed to lose. We can even go so far as making excuses for those who are cutting corners to win because quite simply, sometimes it can seem like it's a lot easier just to help them out than to fight them any longer. Understanding that passages like this remind me that we were not born to lose any more than he was. However, as we have noticed before, the word wait comes up over and over again in the book of Isaiah. And this chapter reminds us that he was willing to wait to win. So my prayer for you is my prayer for me, that to the degree we know we have to wait, that we get ourselves locked into the same mentality that he had, that we will wait no matter how long it takes for wins that are carved out in integrity. But 
to the degree that God has wins for us right now. I pray that we will follow him in a way that would encourage him to open our eyes to the wins he has for us right now so that we can drown out the noise of an enemy trying to convince us that we were born to lose.